you so much for giving of your time today. Um, I'm pretty excited because I asked Peter if he wanted to take the lead on this week's meeting, and not only did he say, yes, I'll take the lead, he came up with, a, with an actual presentation, which this will be a first, uh, for us to actually have a, a presentation presentation with all the bell, bells and whistles and PowerPoint and all that stuff. And if you don't know Peter Mary, well, then you haven't been a DJ more than a week. Um, so, and, and, and I hope you all brought something to drink cause I'm guaranteeing you at least three times in this presentation, he will say in my book, good. Yeah. Sue, Sue will drink for all of us. So <laughs> Sue will take a drink for all of us. So with, with that said, I'm going to let Peter share your screen. Oh, there's, <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like Martin's <laughs> Martin brought a whole case. Um, so with that said, I'm going to let uh, Peter go ahead and share his screen, and we'll all become little thumbnails, and we'll see you uh, when he's done in about three days. Take it, Peter. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ron. Uh, let's see. Make sure I got my buttons correctly pushed, and let's see if this works. There we go. Uh, very good. I think we're rocking. There we go. So uh, my topic today is Game of Thrones on sales, seven plus lessons on effective sales presentations from Tyrion Lannister. And if you have not seen Game of Thrones, I totally get it. There's some people who just wasn't their thing. Uh, but if you have seen it, then you know uh, a little bit of who the characters are. Uh, but I wanted to show that there was a little bit of a personal connection for me as well. Uh, I enjoyed the show, but I had my own unique connect connection to the show. Uh, this is the opening credits uh, from the show from the very first season. And uh, it started with a very cool 3D graphic that then zoomed in on a map of this fantasy world where everybody lived, starting with King's Landing. And you can see all the buildings starting to rise and elevate. And uh, I had the pleasure in 2014 of doing a wedding where the best man uh, is the gentleman who designed this opening sequence you're watching right now. And so since he was the one who designed all of the artistry behind how they went from kingdom to kingdom and had all the different kingdoms rise up and form into what they were, uh, I told everybody that uh, not only was he famous for doing this, but every time he walked into a room, his girlfriend made him play the theme music from the show. <laughs> and it went over very well. <laughs> for those of you who haven't seen the show, this is a big wall of ice. Uh, we've all heard a lot of talk in our country about building a wall. In this fantasy world, they build a wall on the north end of the... Uh, of the fantasy world because there is a threat uh, on the other side of that wall that they never wanted to face again. So they built a gigantic wall of ice and uh, that's what the show revolved around. So we're going to give you a little bit of a recap real quick for those of you who don't know who's in the show. Uh, this is a map of that fantasy world. It's called Westeros and you can see up at the top uh, all of the snowy peaks. That's just past the icy wall and then and coming down just a little bit you can see what's called Winterfell. Uh, and then if you come all the way down to just below the middle, you'll see a little place there called King's Landing. And that's where the primary kingdom is. And a lot of different people and families are vying uh, to have a seat in, in the throne, the Iron Throne at King's Landing. On the left, we have the Lannister family. Everybody go hiss. Uh, we have Cersei Lannister, Jamie Lannister, brother and sister, who also just happen to have three kids together. And then their little brother, and by little, I mean little. He's a little person. Uh, that's Tyrion Lannister. He started off as kind of a medium character who just had bad morals and then turned into a character who was quite the advisor. And then on the top right, we have Daenerys Targaryen, who is the dragon queen. We have Jon Snow, who is a bastard uh, who's wanting to take the throne. And then below them, one of my favorite characters, the Hound. So what I'm about to show you is a scene from this show. And if you've not seen it before... Uh, there's a very large threat coming from the north. Those of you who know, know. Those of you who don't can be surprised. And they've called together a group of people to make them aware of how bad this threat is. And we're going to go through that scene bit by bit. And I'm going to point out how each of these scenes sets up a great sales presentation. So we're going to start right here. And I'm going to let the scenes play. And then I'll comment on them at the end of each segment. Here goes. We have something to show you. Now, this is the first segment, and I call this segment 
gathering the decision makers. In today's world, if you want to book a sale and you have the bride and not the groom, or the groom and not the bride, one or the other, or bride and groom, but the parents are helping with this process and they're not there, it's going to be a lot harder to make that sale. And uh, there's nothing wrong with trying to insist that all the decision makers are gathered together in one place before doing your presentation. If you can't get them together in one place, thanks to the COVID virus, uh, we are all now well aware that we can use this technology to invite them to join that meeting. And I've actually done that many times. I've had meetings with clients I've never met face to face until we show up at the rehearsal because they were out of state or in other parts of the country. Uh, and so using this technology can be a fantastic way to have all your decision makers in one room technically. But if you don't have all your decision makers there, your presentation isn't going to go over as well. Now let's watch the next segment. This segment is called Building the Tension. <laughs> and for those of you who haven't seen this show, do you feel the tension already? What's in the box? What's about to happen? And you might say, how does that relate to a sales meeting? Well, in a sales meeting, there are things that you know that we're all pretty much in agreement that our client doesn't know. And we can either start filling in those gaps right away at the beginning, which is us presenting what we can do and the things we can bring to the table, or we can ask leading questions that help them to identify that they have a bigger need than they might have thought before they came in. And by asking those leading questions and getting them to think larger about what their actual need is going to be, you are creating a tension that's going to need a release. In the world of comedy, uh, Steve Martin pointed out that if you continue to build the tension higher and higher, but then you finally create a release at the end, that's where the laughter comes in. And in the same uh, scenario, when you're in a sales meeting, if you can build that tension and get them to realize that there's something more going on here than what they initially thought when they walked in the door, they're going to start to recognize that they have more of a need and, uh, and maybe don't have their own, their own solutions yet. And you can do that without telling them a word about what you do or offering them the solutions uh, up front. Instead, you're just asking them questions that get them to think bigger. For instance who's going to be serving as a master of ceremonies and how are you going to qualify that person? What do you think some of the uh, qualifications should be in choosing somebody to serve in that role? How would you verify that they're ready to serve in that role at your wedding? By asking those kinds of open-ended questions, clearly they're going to get the idea that I might have some answers to those, but I'm not giving them those answers yet. I'm building tension and I'm getting them to recognize that there might be more going on here than they're aware of. Now we move into the next segment. this segment identifying the problem clearly at this point everybody seated now can see that there is a major problem 
They may not have believed that there was a threat coming from the north beyond the, beyond the ice wall, but now they have no doubt about it. There is a threat, it's a real threat, and it's a very scary threat. And uh, that's part of the reason why I love this show, because it, re it reminded me of a mix of Lord of the Rings and Walking Dead. And uh, since I love both of those, putting those into one genre was definitely a lot of fun for me to watch this show. But in this moment, they have made it very clear, this is the problem we are facing right now. And because they can now clearly see the problem, now, we, now the question is, what can we do to fix it? If you've asked those leading questions to get them to see a bigger need, and you can clearly show them that there is a problem that they don't have a solution for, you're ready for the next step. So now we're going to move into the next segment. We can destroy them by burning them. And we can destroy them with dragon glass. If we don't win this fight, then that is the fate of every person in the world. This segment is called Demonstrating the Solution. He didn't just tell them what the solution was. He demonstrated it. Can you demonstrate for your clients that you not only have the solution they're looking for, but you can actually verify that you can do a fantastic job delivering all the, on those solutions and on those deliverables? One of the things that Ron has gotten feedback from over the years from his clients about the, the characteristics of his service that they liked the most was how organized he was. So when it comes time to demonstrate the solutions he can bring to the table, giving clear examples of how detailed and organized his process is, is going to be one of those things that demonstrates that he has a solution to their needs about it not being organized and not flowing well. And so that's one way to demonstrate the solution. Another factor in this, I think, should be a part of how we present what we do to our clients is to demonstrate by actually showing them some video footage. Show them some video footage of what you do that makes you unique. Show them video footage of what you do on the mic at, at a wedding so they can see the way you carry yourself and that you talk like a normal human being and, and don't sound like some announcer uh, from the 70s, but rather sound like an approachable person that they would want on the microphone in front of their friends and family. And it's also my belief that showing maybe one or two videos of what they don't want is a valid way to get them to identify the problem and then you can demonstrate the solutions that you bring to the table with the footage that you show that demonstrates the difference. So demonstrate that solution. Don't just tell them you can make it a great event. Demonstrate it. Give them some clear examples, uh, video examples of what you've done, uh, detailed paperwork that you can show them, detailed organizational uh, methods that you bring to the table, whatever it needs to be to show them that you can make that solution happen. And that moves us into the next segment. There is only one war that matters, the Great War, and it is here. And that segment is called Asking for the Sale. Was his sales pitch long? No. Did it need to be? No, because he had done such a solid demonstration of what the problem was and what their solution was that getting this group of people to unite behind him and try to fight this threat uh, was something that was a very easy sale to ask for. And that's exactly what he was doing right there. He was asking for the sale. Do you ask for the sale? When you've shown them that you have the solution to their problems, when you've demonstrated that you can deliver those deliverables in ways that nobody else can, are you asking for the sale? Are you telling them, I can make this happen for you and I'd love to do it for you. There's nothing wrong with asking for that sale confidently and letting them know that you're ready to make this amazing if they'll let you. But there is a way to take that a step further and that'll take us to the next segment. I didn't believe it until I saw them. I saw them all. How many? 100,000 at least. Look at the look on his face. And this segment is called Reinforcing with Testimonials. 
Once you've asked for that sale, it's always a good idea to reinforce that others who have used your services were very thrilled with the results they got. And so reinforce with testimonials. If you can use video testimonials, fantastic. Written testimonials, written in their own handwriting, those are great too. Audio testimonials, whatever testimonials you need to bring to the table, but let them see testimonials that people have used your services and are thrilled with your services to reinforce the value that you've already shown them uh, so that they can see that this is a good decision and they should move forward. And that leads us to the final segment. If those things come for us, there'll be no kingdoms to rule. Everything we suffered would have been for nothing. Everything we lost would have been for nothing. The crown accepts your truce. Until the dead are defeated, they are the true enemy. And this segment I call letting them close the sale. Because if you've done your presentation well enough, if you've used the testimonials to reinforce that you're going to be a fantastic value, if you've demonstrated that you have the solutions to their needs and to the problems they're facing, they will close themselves. You don't need to twist their arm. You don't need to talk them into it. You don't need to use tactics to try to convince them this is a good idea. They will come to the conclusion that it's the best idea and they're going to want to use your services. But there's one more aspect to this that I think can go a long way towards helping us be effective in our sales. So I said it was seven plus lessons from Tyrion Lannister. Here's one last lesson. And he's going to start this clip by asking a very simple question. What unites people? What unites people? Armies. Gold. Flags. Stories. There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. And I title this segment, Tell Your Stories. Tell your stories. You have stories of people you have served and solutions you have created and problems you have solved and amazing moments you have helped your couples to pull off. And if you can tell those stories throughout your sales presentation, it will make it very clear that you have a wealth of experience behind you and confidence behind you and happy, satisfied clients lined up behind you that you won't even need as many those testimonials at the end because your stories make it very clear that you know this business, you know how to deliver, you know how to do a great job for all the clients you work for. So you need to tell your stories. Another part of telling your stories is finding out what their story is, getting to know them and who they are will be an integral part of what you can sell to them because you can reflect that story back to them as you are showing them what you can do to help them tell their story to their friends and family. And I don't mean a love story. Yes, you can use a love story to create an amazing moment at a wedding, but I mean making every aspect of that celebration something that is telling their story to their friends and family. But finally, there's one last story I think we all need to think about, and that is your story. What is your story? In other words, why are you doing this? You know, when I first started trying to improve how I was doing my sales meetings with my clients about 15 years ago, uh, my partner Jimmy and I did a little list of things we could do to improve uh, our, our chances. And one of them we did was put together a list of questions. And one of the questions was, why are you having a reception? Why aren't you just running off to Vegas and eloping? Why aren't you just, you know, uh, going down to the courthouse? Why are you having a full tilt wedding and reception and inviting all these people to be there with you? And getting in touch with their why was a powerful way to identify what was most important to them. But you know what? They want to know our why as well. So why? why? Why do you do this? Why do you love doing this if you do love doing it? Why do you enjoy doing this? What is it about this and working with the couples you get to work with that gets you excited to get back to work and makes you uh, so on the edge of your seat you can't wait until this stupid virus is over so we can get back out there and start making some amazing weddings again? What is your why? And how can you communicate your why to them in a way that shows them who you honestly are and what your true passion is about what you do? When they can see that side of you and why you're in this, it will go a long way towards getting them to recognize that you're not in this just to make a quick buck. You're in this because you actually care about what you do. And this is something that invigorates you and it's a part of who you are. 
So the conclusion there is to tell your stories because there's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. And that is Game of Thrones on sales, seven plus lessons on effective sales presentations from Tyrion Lannister. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to turn the share off. There we go. And I'll be happy to take any questions if you want to unmute and shout at me. Well, that was uh, first off. Thank you, Peter. Everybody, very nicely done. Very well presented. Awesome. Now I'm going to have to go watch Game of Thrones. So, <laughs> so questions for Peter. You guys can go ahead and take yourselves off mute if you want to ask a question. Peter, this can uh, be translated into multiple businesses because I'm actually trying to do more than just DJing. <clears throat> so, you know, I really want to be able to apply your lessons. And that, like, that was awesome. Awesome. This is, that's correct, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm teaching it to a group who's mostly DJs, so that's why I'm talking in that language. But I've done uh, talks on these sales uh, methods to a wide variety of people. I actually had one of my talks on sales that, was, uh, that wound up capturing the attention of a guy who had a whole team of people who did nothing but sell high-end um, cookware. And he flew me into Vail, Colorado, and I did a talk for them, designed specifically for them, using the same exact principles. I just didn't do the DJ talk. And they all fit what they did to a T. So, yes, I completely agree. And kudos to you for catching that. Some of the best stuff I've ever learned on sales and marketing came from providing PA support for meetings for real estate agents. And they hired me to come in and provide the music and the microphones. And I sat there and took notes and got some awesome training that I, get, I was paid to attend because I was their PA guy. Uh, but yet what they were saying to the real estate agents totally applied to us. So, yes, absolutely. Thank you. When I saw the hand get cut off, I thought your point was going to be that make sure that you c collect the money. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, the client will close themselves. <laughs> I like the hand that feeds you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Peter, um, uh, really quick. Uh, demonstrating the solution. Uh, what what other examples would you be able to give us to, to be able to better demonstrate solutions? Other than, for instance, uh, maybe get, getting some gathering some videos uh, of what you've done versus other things like you taught me about like nine ten years ago, which still holds true today. But what other what other new modern ways would you be able to use to uh, demonstrate solutions? Some some other examples include um, doing a mini audition for them. Uh, I tell clients all the time, they're hiring talent, and yet how often do they think about auditioning that talent? So if you're ready and you're prepared, you can do a mini audition for them at the sales meeting. And it can be something that you've pre-recorded and produced and put into your presentation, or it could even be something you've done on the fly. I've had clients where because of what they told me about their story and how they met and how they fell in love, I immediately started coming up with lines and things that would fit for that. And when the time came, I pulled that stuff back out during my presentation and did a mini audition of what retelling their story could sound like. And it wasn't the full love story. It was just a 20 to 30 second version of it. But just that was enough of an appetizer to make them go, I want the rest of the meal. So uh, I would say auditioning is definitely one of those things. Uh, another one of those things is I mentioned earlier having some kind of an organizational flow. Uh, too often, we, I, I tend to be the one who doesn't want to talk about music, but I found when I can show clients how I've organized my music and what I have put together, that can be a conversation that can lead into all kinds of avenues about what they like. I had a, an actual opening on Saturday with a client, and they brought up that they, they like bluegrass. And for his 40th birthday, they tried to get a bluegrass band, but it turned into five band members with their wives and then their entourage and 20 people with hotel nights and food. And they're like, no. Nope. <laughs> so they canceled. So I pulled out this awesome uh, playlist I created a while back called uh, Modern Bluegrass Covers. And I started playing him just little snippets from that playlist. And his eyes lit up. And he'd already told me he was going to book me at that point. But it was just something more to connect on and show them that I was in tune with what he liked. And so uh, that's another way that you can do that as well. There's so many different aspects to what we do. And when you're ready to show them that you have solutions nobody else was offering, that, that goes a huge, huge way. Uh, in the professional process, which you attended, Aldo, I, uh, I showed everybody that I not only have music lists for suggestions, but I also have a jump drive. I've actually wanted to put those all onto a... Um, 
iPod Nano. And that way they can't actually copy the music off. They can play it off of it. And that way they have to give the iPod Nano back when they're done. But if I did it with an iPod Nano, I could not only include all those suggestions, I could include all those background playlists. I've never given them my background playlist, but I could give it to them on an iPod Nano. And that's one more solution that would help them in their planning. And I've had times where I've loaned out an iPod with the music on it so they could play it on their own time. Because when I first started in this business, I spent a lot of time doing the planning, playing music for them. And I realized if they had time to do that on their own, it would make our planning sessions a whole lot more effective because then they'd come to the table with what they've already picked rather than me playing 30 songs while they pick one. And so uh, I tried to find ways to streamline it and make it easier for them on their own time to pick what they're going to like and start thinking creatively about what they're going to like. I have another question, but if anybody else wants to go. Go uh, ahead. Go for go it, ahead, uh, so asking for the sale, I have two of my, uh, two of my closest gentlemen, Gabriel and, and Jonathan on here as well. They're watching in and, um, this is the first time they've uh, seen you in action. Um, you, you've always had a great presentation between you and Liz being able to have all your materials together and being able to show it in a way where it puts them, yeah, puts them over. And, uh, it's like, it's like, it's yeah, of course, but for, for other companies or others, other, other MCs or DJ companies that don't really have all of those those ducks lined up in such a great way, such a perfect uh, system. Uh, how else would you how else would you recommend asking for the sale based on recognizance? Okay, um, well, I'm going to roll back to one of my standards that I've taught for years, and that is asking for the sale, but not in too direct of a way. Okay, when you ask for the sale, it's very much like that day when you were in your late teens and you're at a nightclub for the first time and you walked up to a young lady and asked her to dance and then you held your breath waiting to see if she said yes or no, right? And, and it's that awkward moment where you know you could get a no, you know you could get a yes and you're just waiting with anticipation to see what's going to happen. But it's a pointed question, isn't it? However, if I ask somebody, so do you want to book me now or what? That's kind of a pointed question, right? I've asked that question, but only when the client gave me enough buying signals, I knew they were ready. What I, what I would normally recommend if I haven't seen those signals yet is to ask a, 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 a non-pointed question, such as, how soon were you planning on securing your entertainment? Well, when I ask that question, it's non-threatening. It's not saying, do you want to book me? Do you want to make a decision now? It's saying, how soon were you planning on deciding? And if they come back with, well, we want to wait a couple of weeks and meet a couple of people, now you know you can have that discussion, and that opens up the dialogue to go a little further. Um, maybe you can start dialoguing about whether or not the price you quoted was in their range and achievable or not, and see what their feelings are about that, so you can find out if there's any objections while they're there with you, and do your best to answer them. Because if you don't answer them now, they're going to go discuss amongst themselves later, and the answers they come up with might not be the ones you would have given. So there's nothing wrong with having that conversation right then and there. But there are sometimes you might say, how soon were you planning on security entertainment? And they might say, uh, right now. And like I said before the presentation, they closed themselves. They said, we're ready for this. Let's move forward. And there's nothing wrong with that either. If they're ready and they know they want to buy and they know that you're what they want to buy, uh, let them buy, <laughs> especially if you feel comfortable with them. Uh, I had one couple who said, we've decided that we're going to wait 24 hours before making any final decisions. And I said, that's great. Can I sleep on your couch? because we were at their house. So <laughs> uh, it, it's all in the moment and being friendly with them and being engaging with them. But, but the bottom line is, if you felt like you made a good connection with this couple, if you felt like what they're looking for is something you can create, there's nothing wrong with looking them in the eye and saying, I think what you're looking for and what we can bring to the table are a pretty good fit. Don't you? That's, that's a fair question. It's not asking them to commit. It's just asking if they think it's a good fit. If they agree with that, there's nothing wrong with saying, if this works out and you would like to secure our services, I would be thrilled to provide the entertainment at your wedding. And that's a very solid way of saying, I'd like to work with you. Would you like to work with me? Um, so, uh, and, and mentioning that, uh, mentioning that, that, uh, that audition, you know uh, quite well, Aldo, that I, from time to time, will play a recording of an intro for the first dance with their names in it and their song. And I've surreptitiously gotten that. I've had a few occasions where I've gotten the song in the meeting and mixed it and put it into my presentation. So even more so, they're like, how in the hell did you pull that off? Well, I had one where the guy was very, very good in sales. 
he was a salesman himself. And when I dropped that song, he looked at me and he did the um, Robert De Niro from uh, Analyze This. He's like, you, you, you're good, you. <laughs> and, and I told him point blank, I said, the bottom line is when I meet with a couple, I have to figure out if we're a good fit. And if we can get past that hurdle, then my second objective is to do everything I can to make sure that you can't picture anybody else on that microphone at your wedding uh, than a face that looks a lot like this one. <laughs> And, uh, and he signed on the dotted line that day, okay? So there's nothing wrong with, with letting that confidence shine through and letting them see that you are confident you can deliver what they're looking for. But it also has to be a give and take, and it also has to be reading, just like we read a crowd on the dance floor. Read the body language and see what they're saying. Uh, one of my personal favorites I've taught for years is the, uh, is the very famous Peter Mary bathroom clothes. And I don't recommend it all the time. What I, when I recommend it is when you ask them how soon they want to secure their entertainment, that very open-ended question, and you see them look at each other and they do the, uh, doing that bit. They're kind of biting the lip and looking at each other and you can tell what's going on. They just want to talk to each other without you in the room. And that's where if it's your office or you're at a Panera Bread or whatever, you tell them, you know what, I'm going to give you a moment to talk. I'm going to take a quick trip to the restroom and we'll be right back. And you give them a moment alone so they can actually talk. And nine times out of 10, when I see that body language and I give them that moment alone, I come back and they already have the checkbook out. They're already moving forward because they just needed a moment to go, do you, do you? Yeah, yeah, great, let's do it. And so being able to see all of those scenarios happening and being ready for it, uh, it will definitely help you go a long way towards letting them close themselves. Peter, I hate doing this. Uh, I, as as we are all getting new and new, getting uh, uh, getting used to digital technology, uh, we are limited on our time on this particular meeting, unfortunately. So here's what I'd like to do because we really don't have any more time for questions. I wish we did. But since we don't have any time here, why don't you give your contact information? And if anybody has any follow-up questions they'd like to ask, how, how would be the best way for them to reach out to you? Uh, absolutely. I will put it in the chat so they can all see it there. Uh, I would say best would be my email, but I'll also include my cell phone number. Okay. If you want to, if you want to chat sometime, just give me a call. Let's see here. And those are both in there. And I'm also going to point you to because Liz will kick my butt if I don't, our website, funwinningexperts.com. Liz and I do workshops together, and uh, there's a lot of uh, materials there as well. Uh, in fact, I have a brand new DVD out on how to get your crowd's undivided attention in the products page. So go there and check that out as well. But if you'd like to be on our mailing list to know what, when we've got new workshops coming, when COVID finally goes the hell away, uh, go on there and, and put in your email so you can get the email alerts uh, when, uh, when that goes. I want to thank everybody again for joining us. And, and, and yes, with, again, we're having, a, uh, this has been, this has been one of those days where zoom and me and YouTube, and we're all just learning how to be friends. Um, <laughs> and, and it's not going as well as I anticipated. So, um, so again, go ahead and reach out to Peter. Uh, personally, we are going to get back. This is our fifth week, by the way, y'all. And, and I am so proud to say that in this meeting we had a few moments ago, we had like, I think 19 people. We usually run about 19 to 22 people. It's always wonderful to see your faces every week. And I hope that you're getting something out of this, something that'll take your mind off of everything else that's going on in the world and, and something that you'll be able to use on the other side of this, because there will be, I promise, another side to this. Thank you again. And with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, uh, have everybody please stay safe and say well. And we will see you all next week. Bye, all. Thanks, Ru, Ron.